Hi, hope you are doing well. Today I am going to take up a poem titled Geography Lesson. You must be wondering, Geography Lesson? Am I going to take up a lesson from Geography? No, this is the title of the poem which is from your book Honey Dew. This English textbook is for class 8. Before I begin with the lesson, I want you to do one activity. You step out of the house, observe things around you. Look at the buildings, trees and also people around you. Make a note of it. Don't forget to take your notebook with you. Make note of the things that you see in terms of size, shape, their impact on you or anything else that you observe. That is one. The second part of this activity is go to the terrace of your building. Be careful. Now from here you look at the things. Do they look different? Yes, they must be looking different. Now note down your observations. What have you observed? Again in terms of size, shape, the impact it has on you and also anything else that you observe. Now we are going to discuss about one of the most important words that is perspective. What you have observed from the ground and also from the top of your building, you got different perspectives, totally different perspectives. Now look at this picture on your screen. There is a picture of a child. Yes, this picture has been taken from above. Therefore, we can see the features very clearly. But we do not know how tall the child is. Do we get the idea? No, we are not getting any idea. Now the second picture. This has been taken from below. There are four people. Are their features clear? No, their features are not clear. But yes, their hands are clear. So the perspective has changed if we look at things from above or if we look at things from below. Now it's time to compare your observations. You have observed things from the ground level and also at the terrace of your building. So when you are at the terrace, you were looking at people, one sees only the head and hair from high up. We do not see the features, we can only see the head. A person looks smaller from above, but the same thing, if we are looking at a person at the ground level, a person's upper body looks smaller than their lower body when seen from below. So these were your observations too. If you have not done this activity, you must do it and then compare the notes. There are a few more photographs. This is one of the most photographed monuments of India, the Taj Mahal. From distance, it looks part of the landscape. The moment we go closer, the same monument gives a different view altogether. There is clarity. We perceive it in a different way. We look at the work that has been done on the walls. And also, the moment we change the angle, we perceive the same monument in a different way. We look at its different beauty. So the distance, angle, shape, size, everything helps us in developing our perspective about things, about objects, about people. Now looking at things, this beautiful poem shows how perspectives change when we look at things from a distance. This is the main theme of the poem, but when we finish reading the poem, we will talk about another important theme that is part of this 
poem. At eye level, we look at things, streets and landmarks as individual objects. But the moment they are away from us, they become part of the landscape, they merge. So, we look at those things in a different manner altogether. Now, another photograph of the Taj Mahal. Now, here the Taj Mahal is part of the landscape. We look at the white portion, also the red bricks, the green trees, the riverbed has given it a new perspective. It looks part of the landscape. Our perspective changes when we look at the things from different distance, from different angles. I think it applies to our opinions also. We have perspectives, other people also have perspectives. We must learn to respect the other person's perspective because they might have perceived things around them in a different manner as per their context and you might have perceived things in a different manner as per your context. So, when you discuss both the perspectives, your horizon will widen. There is no reason to have conflict over this, your perspectives will widen. Now, looking at things from a certain height, the same structures seem part of a larger design. This you must keep in mind while reading the poem. Let us think. Now, we come back to your city or your locality. Can you imagine what your city would look like if you saw it from 10,000 feet above the ground? If you ever get a chance to go by an airplane, then do look down. You will find that the things look absolutely different. The way you perceive them when you are at the ground, they are entirely different when you are up in the sky. This is how my city looks, that is Delhi. This is the picture that was taken from an aircraft at night. So, definition is not very clear. We can see some, some definitions of lights, maybe they are the markings of the streets. But the moment we change the scene, it is daytime and maybe now the aircraft is closer to the earth, it is landing, the definition, the perspective has changed. Things are becoming clearer. We can look at the trees, we can look at the buildings, maybe we can identify one or two buildings if we look very closely, but it is slightly difficult. But once again, my perspective is different. So, I think the background is clear to you. Against this background, I will be reading the poem for you. As you all know that poems are meant to be read aloud with pro proper tone, intonation, pauses and stress. And once I will read the poem for you, then I expect that you will also read the poem aloud with proper tone and stress, so that you are able to gather the meaning out of the words that have been used by the poet. Words carry meaning. The way the poets use words, they create a vivid picture in front of our eyes. And we have to get that meaning. That is the beauty of a poem. So, let us read the poem now. Geography lesson. When the jet sprang into the sky, when the jet sprang, the word sprang itself gives us the meaning that it goes up, it moved up, it went up. It was clear why the city had developed the way it had. Now the things were becoming clear because the poet was getting a bird's eye view 
looking at things. Seeing it scaled 6 inches to the mile. Now scale 6 inches to the mile. This is the term that we use in geography. When we read the maps, there seemed an inevitability about what on ground had looked haphazard, unplanned and without style when the jet sprang into the sky. So here the poet was getting the idea that why the city is unplanned because there was a probably there was a need to have more houses, land mass was less, the city has not been planned very well and it becomes very clear once you are up in the sky and you are looking at the larger picture. Let us read the second stanza. When the jet reached 10,000 feet, it was clear why the country had cities where the rivers ran and why the valleys were populated. The logic of geography that land and water attracted man was clearly delineated when the jet reached 10,000 feet. 10,000 feet, what does it indicate? A great height and from that level height, you look at things in a different manner altogether. The land, the earth looks different. All those big cities look very small and the poet sees that these cities have developed are situated near rivers or in the valleys where you get lakes. This we read in the geography lesson, do not we? So, we already know about this that human civilization developed on the banks of rivers or near water bodies. Next stanza, when the jet rose 6 miles high, it was clear the earth was round and that it had more sea than land. A new image emerged. When you are at the ground, you cannot see or appreciate any of these things. Now at it from a distance, you are looking at things, you find that earth has more sea and less land. And finally, let us see what the poet says. But it was difficult to understand that the men on the earth found causes to hate each other, to build walls across cities and to kill. From that height, it was not clear why. So the poet raises a very pertinent question. He says, I have understood why cities look different from the ground or from the height. But from the height, I have not been able to understand why people hate each other, why there are walls between countries, between cities. This is what is bothering the poet. Maybe he is hinting that we must learn to respect other person's perspective and resolve the issue without any conflict. This poem has been written by Zulfikar Ghosh. Zulfikar Ghosh is an eminent poet, novelist and critic. He has written many poems and novels. The main idea of the poem was to develop perspective with the metaphor of a geography lesson. The context is geography, how we look at things from near, from far, from a distance. The context is geography. The poem hints at the meaninglessness of harboring hatred against others in our hearts. And the poet is hinting at a larger issue that why do we harbor hatred for each other. Therefore, he has developed a sense of perspective in all of us by providing us this poem. So, this does not apply only to the geography, it applies to human beings as well. We must appreciate the other person's perspective, how they have perceived things, 
how they have looked at the things. Therefore, their point of view is different from ours. And if their point of view is different from ours, this is no reason for conflict. This is the larger theme that the poet, poet is hinting at. We human beings are just specks in the broader canvas of our universe. And he also tells us in his own way that we are just a speck in this universe. This universe is very big. Our earth is part of this very big universe and on this earth in a particular city where we are staying, we are just a dot. So, there is no reason that we should fight for things. We should live in harmony with each other and also with nature. I have a question for you understanding the poem. The question is mention two things that are clear from the height of a jet. Jet you know is an aeroplane. Now you go back to your poem, read it again, read it very carefully, read it slowly at your own pace, underline the phrases, the words that mention two things that are clear from the jet. Yes, the first is that all our cities have developed near rivers or in the valleys. And the second thing is that the earth is round and there is more sea than land. Have you been able to find these words? I am sure you would have. Yes, there is a second question for you. Mention two things that are not clear from the height of a jet. Read your third stanza, you will find the answer. The poet says that he cannot understand why humans fight, why can't they understand each other's perspective and why do they have to build roads across cities. Working with language, the poet has beautifully used words to show negative things at the ground level and he has depicted positive things from the height. If you read your poem once again, you will find this. Now you can look at your screens because I have found them for you. Negative terms at the ground level, haphazard, unplanned, without style, hate, kill. And aerial view, these positive terms are developed, delineated, populated, logic, attracted clearly. So, the poet is telling that from the height, his perspective was becoming clearer. He was getting to understand the things in a better way. But he says at the ground level, why are the things negative? Why do people fight? Why are the things not so clear? Because we do not respect the other person's perspective. We better learn to respect the other person's perspective as well. Now, the poet uses run on lines. Okay, I will explain what is a run on line, but I have given a MCQ over here. I will read all the four sentences. You try to guess and tell me which one is correct. The poet uses run on lines because the poet does not know the rules of poetry. Can it happen? No, it cannot. There is lack of space on the page. No, the poet can use two pages also, three pages. To give us a feeling of seeing several things at a time while flying at speed. Do you think this is the reason? Yes. Run on means where there is no full stop, no comma and one sentence continues for four lines. So, this is the correct answer. This is actually a prose lesson on geography just shaped like a poem. No, this is also not correct. So, what is a run on line? This is a poetic device this many poets use. This is also known as enjambment, where the idea is expressed in one go. The poet continues the next line without a capital letter at the beginning to signal that his or her thoughts are continuing. 
So, it shows the continuation of his ideas. So, you have learnt a new poetic device, you already know about simile, metaphor, personification, but enjambment is also a poetic device which poets use. Find three or four phrases in stanzas 1 and 2 which are likely to occur in a geography lesson. Now, I am taking to you towards your geography lesson. Open your geography books and open this poem. What are the two, three phrases or words that you find in the geography lesson also? It scaled 6 inches to the mile, cities where the rivers ran, the valleys were populated. So, these things we read in geography also, working with language. Words used by the poet to describe the movement of the jet across the sky, sprang, reached, rose. So, the poet has used these words to show the movement of the aircraft. It sprang, it moved up, it went up. But let us work with synonyms because synonyms help us enhance our vocabulary. Do you have your thesaurus with you? Okay. If you do not have it right now with you, you can open it at a later stage. Now, let us look at the words, synonyms, flew, climbed, traveled, soared, ascended, rocketed or mounted. These are some of the synonyms. Synonyms are not exact meanings, they are the same meanings. They can be used for different contexts. Now, you know the word aeroplane, aircraft, air jet, but the poet has used the word jet, ok. So, jet liner, jet liner, aircraft powered by a jet engine. So, let us look at words starting with jet, jet lag, fatigue or tiredness after a long flight. When you take a long flight, you are tired and you cannot get up, you want to sleep, that is jet lag. There are some more words with jet, jet set. There are some people who are always moving. They come from, from one flight and they move to another city on business or on some personal trip. That is jet set. Then jet engine, the engine that is used in the aircrafts. Jet SAM. Do you think this word is related to aircraft? No, it is not related to the aeroplanes. It is related to ships. Jetsam means unwanted material or goods that have been thrown overboard from a ship to lighten it and have washed ashore. That is Jetsam. See the context is entirely different. There is another word which describes something like this that is Floatsam. What is Floatsam? Floatsam is when you do not throw it, people do not throw it, but the debris come ashore, that is flotsam. They have floated and they have come on the shore. Then there is another word with jet, jet black. Now, it is certainly not related to aeroplanes. Jet black is the color black, which is deep black. The logic of geography. Yes, there are a few statements on your screen. Please read them very carefully. They are all from your poem but find out which are related to geography. Shall I read them for you? There are cities where there are rivers. Is this related to geography? Yes. Cities appear as they are not from 6 miles above the ground. No. It is easy to understand why valleys are populated. Yes, of course, geography lesson and also for that matter in history also you read all of these. It is difficult to understand why humans hate and kill one another. This is not a geography lesson. The earth is round and it has more sea than land. This is related to geography. So, can you appreciate that learning cuts across the curriculum? Here in this poem, there are references to geography, there are references to history also because civilizations develop on the banks of the river. So, you are learning a lot. Now, if you want to know more about civilizations, you want to know more about geography, open your geography books, open your history books and you can read more about it. We have come to writing. I have two tasks for you. First one is 
suggests some ways in which people on earth can live in harmony and peace. Yes, the poet was hinting at this, that people fight with each other. Why can't we live in harmony and peace? We can live in harmony and peace if we understand other person's perspective. How they perceive things, how they have looked at things. Why their opinion is different from ours? Why is there a gap in our thinking and their thinking? There has to be a way that this gap can be bridged. So write on this. Now I am not talking about peace and harmony only between humans but also with the environment. So while writing, please keep the writing process approach in mind. Then my second task for you is draw a map of your locality, village, depicting its physical features and distances between places etc. and describe it in your own words. You can draw the map of your school and then describe where is your library, where is the principal's room, where is your playground, where is the parking space, all of that. Or you can draw the map of your locality. You know that where is the hospital, where is the bus stand, where is the playground. So you draw that map. Obviously, you will not draw it on a scale, you will make a painting and then describe it. I have a project for you. The project is, today the United Nations acts as a mediator to keep peace and order in the world, right? You must be knowing that. You must have read about it in political science. You see. The third area has also come here, history, geography and political science. So read about it, note down the main points, then gather information about the UN and its constituents, bodies and write an article on their roles and functions. I hope you will be able to do this. We have come to the end of this session and you can share your writing with us on the email id for cit and cert we would like to read it and share our views with you happy learning